So you want to keep a man's attention. I'm going to invite you to do this. But let's get real. Why is it a woman's job to keep a man's attention? Why is all this dating advice centered around what women must do? Why doesn't this address what men must do? You see, the problem with a lot of dating advice, it's centered around uh, a younger demographic. And it often talks about behavioral psychology, um, you know, a lot of instinctual stuff related to men are the provider protector and women are the nurturers and they're the ones that are supposed to submit to men and such like that. So there's a lot of confusing advice out there. The problem with a lot of advice that's geared to a younger demographic, it doesn't address the wounds that most of us begin to experience in midlife. Do you know why they used to call it midlife crisis and a man would go out and get a red Corvette to relive his youth? You see, midlife crisis is when a man's blueprint, or let me reframe that, any human being's blueprint of what they thought their life was going to be like collides with their reality. That's what I believe midlife crisis is. And in this space, what happens is, is our childhood wounds and our adult traumas begin to surface at a much greater rate. Because when we're younger, we're driven by testosterone, we're driven by estrogen, we're driven by a chemical charge to basically procreate. That's where a lot of evolutionary biology and psychology and all this stuff and a lot of content out there in the dating realm is centered around this narrative and it doesn't take into consideration those of us who've experienced, who now are dealing with our childhood wounds and traumas and also this reality check of our blueprint colliding with our reality. Okay, so why is this important to this conversation? You see, a lot of times women get confused um, when a man is giving a lot of attention in the early stages of dating. Men are giving the attention. And what happens is when that attention ceases, women start to recoil and begin to chase a man. Now, I want to use a quote that's, you know, a lot of women come to me will say, Jonathan, I'm connecting with a man on so many different levels. And I like a quote that Matthew Hussey says, and that is, attention doesn't equal intention. I love that quote. Attention doesn't equal intention. And what we're going to talk about in a few minutes is the intention you may want to consider going forward to actually create a healthy, happy union with another human being, the intention. And quite frankly, when I'm, even though the title says keeps a man's attention, I just want to be clear, this should be mutually, this should be a mutual effort of both parties, okay? A mutual effort of both parties. So, um, so, I, I want to dive into one thing before I, I'm going to give you five areas to consider going forward. And when I say these five areas, considering them both for men and women alike. Why do women chase? Well, here's what I think happens in many cases. Because a man might initially give intention or attention, mostly driven from a bio bio biological perspective, biological perspective of spreading his seed, connecting on a physical level, that it might seem that he's genuinely interested in you. And what happens is most guys today, I always say they're winging it. They're winging it from a relationship perspective. They're winging it. So what happens is because they have no real game plan or intention, they've chased the sex, they got the sex, and now they recoil. And what oftentimes happens is women begin to chase. This is one of the reasons why you might have been attracted to this title. And I think what happens is, is when we have an unhealthy attachment to another human being, we begin to chase in an unhealthy way. And I want to invite a more conscious way of approaching this process. So what's it going to take for the two of you to keep each other's attention? Well, I'm going to share five things, but I'm going to say there's 500 things I could be sharing. Was it 500? Well, easily 20 to 50 things, but we're going to keep it for today's conversation to five. 
So, and again, this is what you mutually should be doing for each other. So I want to be clear. The first thing is, instead of focusing on the guy, I, I wrote these notes. I want you to focus on the relationship you want. I want you to consider what is the relationship you want? Well, why is this so important for keeping someone's attention for both of you? Because if you're misaligned with one another, it makes no sense to explore a relationship with one another. For many of you, you're not even clear on the type of relationship you want. If you follow my work, you know I'm very clear at a minimum once I'm in a relationship with someone, I want to spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy with the game plan of either moving in together or getting married. That I'm very clear on my intention. Now I'm sharing my personal one. Some of you might go, God, Jonathan, three or four days and nights a week, that's way too much. Well, folks, I want you to think about this. Do you want, to, you if you're only good for one day a week or two days a week, do you want it to be that way for 10 years? I want you to contemplate this as if it's something that you're going to do long-term and not in the short term. Decide the kind of relationship you want. Now, I think it's important to recognize the four pillars to relationship readiness. The four pillars to relationship readiness. I have it written down here. It's by the way, these are my scribbled notes I wrote before. I mean, I wrote this six months ago. Relationship readiness starts with being your best self. Being your best self. If you're not familiar with the book, um, The Four Agreements by uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. By the way, all the books I recommend are in the links below. This is a great model to have for your life to be your best self, which includes healing childhood wounds and traumas, healing those adult traumas you might have experienced like divorce. Divorce is a very traumatic experience for most people. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's an unraveling of the tapestry of a life you had with someone else. And it's for you to be relationship ready. It, it's important to be in your own sovereignty to keep someone's attention. And this, is mutual, this isn't mutually exclusive to one person. This is for both of you. Another facet of relationship readiness is to learn about who you are and, what, and to vet for alignment with another person. Vet for alignment. What is vetting? It's a, it's, it's, dating is a vetting process. That's the purpose of dating. But Jonathan, all the dating coaches just say I should sit back in my feminine energy and let the man lead. And I shouldn't do anything. I shouldn't be inquisitive. I shouldn't be asking questions because that seems like an interrogation. Folks, I'm here to say, you don't have time to mess around. You don't have time to mess around. Dating is a vetting process. To, and by the way, don't be afraid to be bold. Don't be afraid to be bold. I'm very upfront. I'm very upfront right from the very beginning. Why? Because the person I'm aligned with is also a very upfront person. They love that sort of directness and, and clarity. Directness and clarity. Clarity. Oh my God. This allows us to live life. Many of you are living life with rose colored glasses, or God forbid, you have glasses with, if they're all scratched up. By the way, please forgive my excitement. I just get so passionate about this. And I know this is my videos where I'm trying to be calmer. <laughs> okay. Another thing is to recognize that chemistry alone is not the recipe for a relationship success. It's important. And by, while, while chemistry is so important, shared values, a shared vision for your uh, relationship, as I talked about earlier, um, blendable lifestyles, and more importantly, is this person emotionally grown up to be in a healthy, happy relationship? We are swimming in a sea of emotional dysfunctionality. And so you can have all the chemistry of the world, but if they are emotionally constipated or they emotionally stunted, and, and if they have terrible relationship skills, and by the way, how do you vet their relationship skills? Folks, you have to find out about their past relationships. There is gold in that in, in, in those darn dare, darn dare hills. There's gold in those darn dare hills. It's an old um, 
cowboy saying or something like that. Um, um, gold miners saying, folks, your past relationships give uh, inquiring about someone's past relationships gives you insight into how they operate in the world. And you have to become a detective, whether you like it or not. Now, by the way, you can make all this fun too. <laughs> I'm going to say, I know this sounds daunting, but when you think about it, the most important decision you're going to ever make in your life most likely centers around who are you going to mate with. And today's dating environment is a very casual mating environment. It's a very much a, a hookup environment. It's very much self-serving. And for those of us, if you're like me, you don't want to waste your time. Okay, number two, instead of the man proving himself, understand a relationship is a two-lane street. You invest in test. You make effort. Oh, that's another Matthew Hussey. Invest in test. Make effort to see if he meets that investment. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of reciprocity. I don't believe in lopsided dating practices. I'm a believer of mutual effort from both people. I let me just tell you something. I did a post to a group of 15,000 men and asked them, how would you feel if a woman on the second or third date said, hey, I'd like to plan a date and take you out? And I asked 15,000 men in a Facebook group. Do you know well over 1,500 men responded? She's one of a kind. She's a unicorn. She's special. Don't let her go. She's partnership material. Now, a couple men, you know, griped, but these, you can read in their comments, they're control freaks. They want to control the outcome by being in charge. I'm a big proponent of reciprocity. You don't have to be, look, if you want a traditional one up, one down relationship, that's fine for you. I'm just inviting you to recognize that most men, just like in this survey I did, appreciate reciprocity. Okay, number three. By the way, okay, this one is it says show your playful side, your flirty person. I gotta tell you, women today, and, and this is true of men too. Okay, I'm not sing singling out women. I gotta tell you, dating is so boring. Now, again, you might be thinking, well, Jonathan, you're advocating for uh interrogating people. No, I'm saying ask curious questions from a fun playful way. It's how you do it. You know, it's how you do it. You could even say something like this. I don't know if you're like me. Um, my, my marriage, you know, as good as it was, you know, we had some issues, but I'm so grateful for, you know, the experience of having, you know, the father to my children. And I'm just offering a suggestion here, ladies. And, you know, I'm curious to know, and you can say it with a big smile, how did your marriage work out? Just say it with a smile, playful, fun. You know, what brings you to singlehood right now? What happened in your past? I'm curious. You go like this, I'm curious. I want to get to know you. By the way, I want you to think about this. What is dating? It's like this. I want to get to know all about you. I want to hear your story. You both should be doing it for each other. When you ask questions, it allows him to puff up his chest and share. Now, again, we have wounded people, so you're going to get a lot of vomiting. There's no doubt. And many of you are wounded, and you're going to be vomiting your stuff. But that's okay. We have to swim through this to, to, to strengthen our muscles, if you will. But practice flirtiness, playfulness in the context of getting to know someone. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing that's incredibly attractive to human beings is a sense of independence. But more importantly, bump, 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 bump a sense of self-love. What is self-love? And by the way, this is my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. What is self-love? Self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem, self-reliance. See, when we operate from that confident place of loving ourselves. Now, I know you've heard the saying, you have to love yourself before you love another. No. It's not about that. Now, I would encourage you to be loving on yourself, to be, listen, the worst critic in everybody's life is the one in between their ears. That's not a loving thing to do. 
you know, the most kindest thing to do is to love on yourself. And when you can come from a place of loving yourself, you have a capacity to give from that overflow. I don't think we ever fully achieve loving ourselves. I think we come on to this planet, we give it our best shot, and then we pass away and we do it over and over and over and over again. I think we actually probably live a groundhog day. What if possibly, folks, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. What if possibly when you pass away, you get reborn in exactly, exactly the same experience? What if that's actually what happens? Nobody knows. So let's play with that but you come back with a little bit more knowledge from the previous go around. What if that's the possibility? Excuse my slurping. Oh, by the way, my coffee mug says, don't make me go all psycho roommate on you. <laughs> Show him self-love. It isn't about giving him space, but having your own life. I need you to see a lot of people operate from, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to validate me so I can be good about that. I need you to text me so I'm not afraid. Folks, when two, when an individual sovereign being meets another sovereign being who doesn't need their love to feel fulfilled, that's what self-love is all about. And you can experience it from a place of mutual joy because life is better with company. That's incredibly attractive and that keeps a person's attention, whether you're a man or a woman. <laughs> Lastly, and number five, and this is so critically important. I think most human beings have a difficulty, men in particular, have a difficulty being vulnerable. I think it takes a woman to open a man's heart. I think it takes a woman to open a man's heart. And it starts by leading by example. You know, I have a dear friend who was in a relationship with a woman who constantly shared her feelings with him. And he's like Mr. Stoic. Mr. Stoic, okay? And while that relationship didn't work out and he's now subsequently in a new relationship and he got engaged, I think that relationship prepared him for this new relationship because in that relationship, by her continually expressing her needs, wants, and desires, okay, by expressing it in a nonviolent way, if you're not familiar with the work of nonviolent communication by Marshall Rosenberg, I highly recommend checking it out. By expressing her needs, wants, and desires in a nonviolent way, she little by little opened him up to emotional intimacy. See, most people don't know what emotional intimacy is. If you haven't read the book by Robert Masters, Emotional Intimacy, I highly recommend reading this to get a sense of what is true intimacy. Intimacy, into me you see. Remember I said earlier, you should be like this, tell me about yourself, okay? Two people, I, I want you to imagine two people sitting across each other at a, I'll even think of it as an old um, ice cream uh, soda a shop. Okay. You're just sitting across from each other. I want to hear about the nooks and crannies of who you are. I want to see into your heart. This is the beginning stages of emotional intimacy. And let's face it, since women no longer are dependent upon men, most women are not dependent upon a man from a financial perspective. What's the point of being in a romantic relationship with someone? It is to connect on an emotional level. That's what it's all about, I believe. And learning these skills makes you better prepared to keep the attention of the type of man that I invite you all to begin to date. And I call these men the growers and the builders. These are men who are crystal clear on the type of relationship they want. They know they have a long-term mating strategy. It's not about getting into your pants or giving you lots of attention to get in your pants. It is getting into your heart, creating a space where you feel safe. It's not based on romance. It's based on curiosity. Curious to see if you're both a match for one another. And I believe when you encompass these five things, both men and women alike, you have a greater chance of keeping each other's attention because ultimately a relationship is an opportunity. A romantic relationship is an opportunity to grow as a couple. And you have the, you listen, all the books behind me are the resources, the tools to creating this co-created experience. 
that I suspect all of you want. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, post a comment below. I do my best to read them all. Uh, if you're a member of my group called Midlife Love Mastery, there's a link as well. Please tell your friends about my group. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis to connect with me on a once a month webinar and also through a Facebook group. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. All right, I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love as well. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.